Israel is dedicated to defeating the Hamas. Can they? They talk about the day after Hamas. Is the day after right now? Join us. Yoni Ben Menachem, it's a great honor to have you together with my co-host and dear colleague of many decades, Khaled Abu Tahme, one of the great analysts uh, of the Middle East, as you are, Yoni. So we have the experts here. Let's get into the tough questions. We Just before we went on the air, we said uh, we really want to focus today's discussion on the day after. Yoni says, the day after what? And the you know official voices in Israel, as well as the mainstream discourse, talking about the day after Hamas. Yoni, what do you th- what do you think about the day after Hamas? Is the day after what Israel should be doing now? There is no day after Hamas because Hamas is not going anywhere. It's not going to disappear. It's very obvious that uh, uh, the objectives of of the war, Israeli objectives of the war, are not focused well enough because uh, you cannot destroy Hamas as a uh, as a movement. Hamas is not only a terror organization, it's also a political movement. So you cannot uproot the ideas of Hamas, the ideology of Hamas against Israel, against the Jews from the minds of the Palestinians. This is impossible to do. What you can do is destroy the military infrastructure of Hamas in the Gaza Strip and kill the military leaders of the of the military arm of Hamas. This is possible. But to uproot the ideas of Hamas from the minds of the Palestinians, I think this is impossible to do. Khaled, what do you think? Uh, are you, are you on the, online with, uh, with Yanni? Yes, I totally agree. Uh, I think we are now more than 100 days after the war. Uh, we see that Israel has managed to destroy some of the Hamas military capabilities, some of their governmental capabilities, but uh, it will take a long time before you can destroy Hamas totally. Uh, as as a governing power in, in uh, Gaza. Now the question is, how long will that take? I don't think that a short-term military operation in Gaza can achieve these two goals, by the way. Uh, Hamas is now uh, hoping uh, or betting on Israel, you know, leaving the Gaza Strip uh, sooner or later. The way they see it is that it's only a matter of time before Israel leaves Gaza and we're back to uh, square one. Uh, so it depends. I mean, I believe that if you want to destroy Hamas military and governmental capabilities, you need to stay there for at least one year, two years, three years. Uh, but a limited military operation is not going to achieve its goals. Now, we have another problem, which, as Yoni said, you destroy Hamas's uh, military and governmental capabilities, but what about the ideology of Hamas? What about the fact that Hamas is, is in the hearts and minds of uh, most of the people in Gaza? How do you get rid of that? Uh, that can be done only through a process of de-radicalization, and that will take even more time. It will probably take another generation or two. Uh, to At least two generations. To get rid of the Hamas... Uh, uh, ideology, and that also depends then on who is running Gaza. If you're going to hand the Gaza Strip over to uh, someone affiliated with Hamas or even to the Palestinian Authority, you're going to go back to square one because both of them are, you know, they're very uh, anti-Israel. They're both spreading the same hate messages against Israel, and sometimes it's even difficult to distinguish between the Palestinian authorities. And Hamas's rhetoric. Well, that's exactly why Israeli government leaders, beginning with the prime minister, have said that they are unwilling to allow the return of the Palestinian Authority, which, which is, as Khalid said, is no better rhetorically or even ideologically than the Hamas. The American people and the American administration misunderstand this point. The, the, the PA is not more moderate ideologically or rhetorically. They may not be sending suicide bombers uh, or rockets, uh, but they certainly are inciting to assault, to terror assaults. They are incentivizing to terror assaults through these this pay for slay, what they have, the martyrs, the martyrs fund. So Yoni, how do you, 
you know, how do you square the circle? Khaled Abel Drama says he agrees with you. He says that there is no day after Hamas because Hamas will always leave a legacy, political legacy, governmental legacy, ideological legacy. But on the other hand, the PA, unfortunately, which is misunderstood in the West, is no better than the Hamas. So what, what, what corner is Israel standing in right now? I think uh, in my uh, estimation, the Israeli political echelon is making a huge mistake by uh, fighting with the American administration about the issue of the PA uh, as the body that will be responsible for the Gaza Strip. And I tell you why. Uh, the Americans, uh, I heard President Biden saying that they want a re revitalized PA to control the Gaza Strip. Why Israel is objecting that? Because what is revitalized? The Americans are talking about a PA that will not support terrorism, that will not incite against Israel. Uh, so this is a good thing for Israel. Why Israel is objecting that? I don't understand. And we all know, and I think the Americans also know, maybe it's just because of the presidential, presidential elections in the United States that President Biden is saying these things. But they know that the PA will not change. The Americans are asking for reforms in the PA for, for the last three years. And Abu Mazen, the, the head of the PA, Mahmoud Abbas, is cheating the Americans, sending them back and forth. They will never do these reforms. Yeah, but so you just contradicted yourself. I'm not contradicting. So I'm saying... Why Israel insists on this? Israel should say yes to Biden. Okay, bring us the revitalized. Oh, you mean the Palestinians will cancel themselves out? Of course. Yeah, what, what Yoni is saying is that Israel can always rely on the Palestinians. No. Say no. That's Abu Ebed. And that's Abu Ebed. You know, you know uh, after yeah. the Came David, I'll tell you a story. After the Came David uh, summit in 2000 with uh, President Clinton, Yasser Arafat, and uh, Ehud Barak as Prime Minister, I had a very uh, uh, good friend uh, who deceased. Uri Dan was his name. Oh, yes. Uh, of course, you remember him. So, uh, Writer in the Jerusalem Post, very forgivingly. And everybody everybody uh, was very upset that the summit failed and there was no peace. The, the, the Intifada didn't start yet, the second Intifada. But Uri Dan, he said, that's a good thing that what happened. We will build a big statue for Yasser Arafat in the center of Jerusalem. I said, why? Why should it? Because he said, because he saved Israel. By saying no to everything, he saved Israel. So he should have a big statue in the middle of, of Jerusalem. We will also build another statue for uh, Abu Mazen in the center of Jerusalem because he will never, he will never uh, uh, fight terrorism. He will never stop the incitement. So there's nothing to argue about in the United States. What we have to do is to prove the Americans and discover the real face of the PA to President Biden. Yeah, and I'm sure that he knows, and I'm sure that the CIA, William Burns, the head of the CIA, they know exactly what is going on in the PIA. It's only politics. See, Dan, if the PA really wanted to reform or change, they had many years to do so. But they're not right. even showing signs of it. And by the way, they're also coming out and saying, you know, we're not going to allow anyone to meddle in our internal affairs, which, which is no thank you. The last meeting that Lincoln had with President Abbas in Ramallah was a very tense meeting. Yeah, yeah. according and, to all reports, it was yeah. shouting. They were even screaming at each other. Not only that, but uh, uh, President Abbas deliberately or intentionally humiliated him. Uh, he was looking at the watch, at his watch all the time, as if, you know, uh, let's finish with this. And they did not put the American flag mm. behind Blinken while the Palestinian flag was behind President Abbas. That's also a message. So in other words, the Palestinian Authority has already said no. Uh, to so why should we fight with the Americans? Exactly. This is what Yoni is saying. Why should Israel look bad uh, and fight with the Americans when you already know that the Palestinians are not going to deliver? Let the Palestinians say no. Let the Palestinians fight with the Biden administration, not Israel. That's what that's and, and One more thing, and one, another argument. I saw the uh, the plan of the Minister of Defense, uh, Yoav Gallant, for the day after Gaza, the one he he presented in the cabinet. It was also published in Israeli media. Uh, there's not, no secrets about it. And this is ridiculous. He's talking about a local uh, Palestinian leadership that will govern the Gaza Strip that will not be hostile towards Israel. This is something that is not does not exist in reality. You will not even find one Palestinian in Gaza Strip that is not hostile to Israel. Is even you, one. I think the assumption is that Israel is hoping that there will be Palestinians who, will, who are anti-Hamas, but Israel is assuming that they will be pro-Israel. 
No, they don't have to be pro Israel. They just they just don't have to. They just uh, are prepared to be uh, neutral towards Israel. Now they're not. They're what not does going. This remind us <laughs> from the eighties. Remember? Yeah. Well, the the, 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 the village leaks. leaks. The village. But what was the problem with the village leaks? Which Yoni <laughs> covered extensively. I'll yeah. tell you more. I covered Menachem Milson. No. Yeah, Menachem Milson. He's professor. And Igal and Igal the other one. Yeah. Who. So what was the problem with the village leagues? Which was what? Let's tell our viewers what the village leagues was. The village leagues were local councils, Palestinians in uh, mostly in the south of uh, the West Bank on Judea and Samaria in, in Hebron area, and they were set up and were armed also by by the Israeli army to run the the local affairs of the Palestinians. And of course, they immediately they were accused as, col as collaborators. And uh, this whole idea collapsed uh, eventually. Israel did not succeed in uh, in uh, in building this uh, infrastructure for civil affairs, no politics, just to run the daily life of the Palestinian. Now, you mentioned the village leagues, which I covered them as a journalist, but I also covered the Gaza Strip for many years, like 40 years yeah. maybe. And I can tell you, I covered a lot of assassinations by the PLO, by Fatah, of a, a moderate Palestinians that were not uh, in favor of Israel, just wanted to have good life in Gaza and to manage the local affairs of the municipalities. They were all assassinated by uh, by the terror organization. So if Israel now thinks, if the Minister of Defense uh, thinks that he will find a local leadership that will survive, even if we will equip them with weapons like Israel did with the village leagues, they will not survive one day. Hamas will eliminate all of them. So this is something which is not practical. So the only solution is to transfer the ball to the Palestinian court, to the PA, and say, okay, we agree, you come to Gaza, let's see you. But I the PA is not going to come to Gaza, exactly. there's no chance. So, But why should we take the blame for it? You're kicking the can down the street, yeah. and putting the blame and cornering the Palestinians. Yeah, uh, I want to see Abu Mazen leaving Ramallah, uh, the, the Mukata in Ramallah, and going to sit in Gaza and run the sewer problems and the... Rehabilitation of Gaza Strip. It will never do that. Well, what will end up happening is what Israel is preparing for, which is a temporary military administration in Gaza. And as they say in Hebrew, there's nothing so permanent as a temporary military right. administration. Which goes back, Dan and Yoni, to my idea that Israel will have to maintain some kind of a short-term or even a long-term military presence in Gaza in order to stabilize the situation and see the emergence of but in order to do that, first you have to overcome Hamas. Yes. But there is a way of military of overcoming Hamas. As yeah, Israel yeah. uses overwhelming power, which is what the Middle East, that's the Middle East language. Right. They, and Khaled has made this point, I'm actually just uh, uh, leveraging off of what, Khaled, what you've said for a long time. If Israel shows overwhelming determination and power to destroy the Hamas, that will send an important perception uh, I and information uh, message to the local public, and that will allow certain, uh, let's say, local administrations, municipalities, to emerge that are not outwardly, violently opposed to the existence of the state of Israel. You can. I think that I think that Prime Minister Netanyahu we should cut a deal with the President Biden, telling him, "Let us pull, allow us to use all the force of the IDF." Put the, all the forces back in Gaza Strip. Give us two, three months. We will topple the Hamas regime very extensively. We will fight. Take over Philadelphia uh, corridor. Take over Rafah. Occupy the whole Gaza Strip, and then we will agree for the revitalized PA to come to Gaza. This sh this should be the deal. I'm sure uh, President Biden will accept it. Don't worry. The PA is not going to come to Gaza. You can be assured. Yeah, so therefore, what the, what the U.S. But we will gain the collapse of the military infrastructure of Hamas. Right, and you also gain uh, American uh, support. legitimacy and support. Yeah, as long as Israel's presence in Gaza is seen as a temporary and short-term uh, process, Hamas is not going to go anywhere. And as I said before, Hamas is betting on the fact that Israel, or on the hope that Israel will soon leave Gaza. Once you send them the message that you're there to stay for three, four, five months, or as Yoni said, that you are determined to get rid of them, then you will see Hamas's local leadership, Hamas's military capabilities totally collapse. And also the people of Gaza will understand that Israel is serious. Exactly. The people in Gaza, and I speak to many of them, they're under the impression that this is just another military you know, uh, confrontation, another round of uh, fighting, and it will end. 
in another two, three, four weeks, but it will end sooner or later. They don't. They see that Israel has no, you know, no end goal. They don't understand Israel's end goal. They see that Israel is saying one thing, but they see that Israel is not achieving. Israel's two goals have not been achieved so far. Uh, destroying Hamas's military and governmental capabilities and releasing the hostages. Yeah, they haven't achieved either one of them. My question uh, that I ask myself all the time is how effective is Israel in terms of information uh, operations in Arabic to the local uh, Gaza population? It seems to me they could be doing a lot more in terms of crafting a public Arabic narrative all the time through leaflets, radio, online, uh, uh, capabilities. They have technology. They have uh, they have WhatsApp and uh, Instagram, and uh, the internet lines are open in Gaza. But that seems to me to be a major requisite for Israel to do now is to craft a narrative in Arabic that it it pushes every single day. This is a very good idea, but uh, who will implement it? This is the question because. Uh, the government uh, hasn't proved that it's sufficient in this. You know, they're making asbara, whatever it's called, all in English, mostly in English, and and they let let the IDF spokesperson uh, to convey the in messages Arabic. in Arabic. In, the IDF spokesperson in Arabic. That's not enough. Uh, yeah, to convey the messages to uh, uh, to the people in Gaza. But these are only uh, military messages. There's no policy message. Well, that's no. That, that's my no. I meant policy messages, yeah. and those policy messages can still be communicated by, let's call it, civil military uh, spokespeople. Which is something conspicuously absent. There's absent. That's why that's the that's that's discussion. Israel is not communicating its messages or its policies to the Palestinian population in Gaza in Arabic. It's not enough to have the idea of spokesmen in Arabic send messages to the population in Gaza saying, leave this area, yeah, leave that area. That's evacuation. That's what it's doing. Right. Uh, you need to talk to them. That's right. In Arabic, you need to address them. That's not being done. By the way, that's what we're doing for a moment of self-promotion with my two dear colleagues here. At not, the... o- not only to the people of Gaza. You left today, there's a situation in Judea and Samaria, which is explosive. You also have to convey these messages to the population in the West Bank. Well, that's what we're doing. The JCPA with our we we have yeah, now but the, in Arabic. Also. In Arabic, it has to okay. be. we have, as you know, Yoni, we're developing now as we speak at JCPA and in other places around the world, um, Arabic messaging and information um, uh, operations in which we are speaking directly to the Arab world in Arabic uh, um, and sir, and right from the JCPA. This is something that's been missing. From Israel's national communications yeah, policy, the focus I think now because it's a state of war, is the uh, priority should be Judea, Samaria, Judea and Samaria and in Gaza. In Gaza. Yeah. I yeah. think this is the priority that should be now until the war is over. But this is a very important project. I didn't know that you're doing that. Yes. Uh, I, I, yes, and yes, you, you probably I, I didn't know it. that you're part of it also. <laughs> okay, oh, it's I, because we are in the early stages. Yes. Okay. Still in the but I bless you to do that, and I hope that you can get a lot of uh, contributions from. Uh, uh, all over the world to, to promote this idea because this is the right way that, that it should have been done. Absolutely. And the government is not doing that. So who will do it? That's right. There so has to be I a hope, national I hope policy. That will succeed. I that's hope. what we are. That, that's what we've been planning to do for the last six or eight months. And we're breaking uh, ground as we speak here at the uh, JCPA uh, 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 podcast, video cast at the JNS Center, where we're, we're opening uh, uh, our own. We'll be also very delighted to partner with our dear friends at JNS on a number of different projects as well. They're it's a, it's a wonderful, this is a wonderful this is a, this operation. It's very important, and unfortunately, all the Israeli gov- governments, not only this particular government, all of the Israeli governments neglected that field. And this is very important to uh, communicate with the people in the Judea and Samaria, in, the, in Gaza, and to, uh, to deliver the, the Israeli message. The Israeli message is not what Hamas is lying and telling them. That's right. We don't want to uh, make a transfer for the Palestinians from uh, Gaza. Or the West Bank, we don't. We want to live in peace with them. We have to send them the message of peace and not the message, hostile message, of expelling them and taking over what is the, they consider their lands. On we only have to create a good atmosphere in order to some reach some sort of a solution, because eventually we have to to recognize that the Palestinians are not going to disappear. And the Israelis are not going to disappear. Well, that's what the Palestinians, uh, Arabs, have got to understand, that Israel is not going to disappear. Right now, yeah. they think they've been they've been nurtured and, and they've been suckling on the breast of vile 
uh, uh, you know, nuclear propaganda that Israel is going to disappear but in a matter of time. After, uh, if the numbers are correct, of course, I don't know if it's a uh, Palestinian uh, propaganda or not. If that 24,000 dead in Gaza as a result from the war in 100 days and uh, 60,000 injured yeah. pro approximately. That's according to the uh, Hamas. That's the Hamas control. Ministry of yeah, Health. I, said, I don't know if the numbers are, are correct, but I think that they now understand that Israel is not going to disappear. I think they understand it very well. And they understand that Israel is a strong country. But we have to solve the problem of Hamas, and they have to, to understand that Israel cannot live, coexist together with Hamas. It's either Israel or Hamas. So the message is to eliminate the infrastructure, military infrastructure of Hamas. Because the other purpose of, of uprooting the Hamas is a long process. It, I don't think we can do it now. It will take time. It's a matter of uh, two or three generations at least. This is not going to happen now. But the military infrastructure got to disappear. Israel must destroy it. It must destroy it for, uh, also because the Hamas represents one tentacle, large tentacle, of the Iranian octopus. And this is a frame for communications policy, for political and diplomatic policy, that our friends in the United States simply misunderstand. And it may be because we haven't communicated it properly. But when we just talk about Hamas, 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 we're not talking about some small terror organization. We're talking about one arm of a very large, international, ideologically driven, religiously driven terror network that is completely committed and dedicated to the eradication of the small nation state of Israel. And that is directed and sponsored and funded and armed by Iran. The Iran by the Iranian regime in Tehran. Yeah, you saw it just this morning. It's not, it's not totally Iran. You, of course, you are correct. And Qatar. And also the Muslim Brotherhood yep. movement. And there is cooperation from Russia and China today. Yeah. This is a world and war broad, that the Iranians the are driving. The Brotherhood movement is not only against Israel yeah. and the Jews, it's also against the Arab regimes. Yeah, that's right. And the, and the, and, and the other uh, Arab countries, they understand it very well. They know what, what the Muslim that's Brotherhood right. is going for. So this is, uh, Hamas is not only a danger to Israel, it's also yeah. a danger for the Arab regimes. Yeah, that's been very clear. As a matter of yeah. fact, the Arab regimes actually saw Arafat and the PLO as a danger to the Arab regimes. Right. So there's just a question. This is the convergence between Islamic and, uh, let's call it, a a Arab third world revolutionary uh, ideology that has been around for decades and now is coming home to roost. It's very important, Yoni's comment. You have this convergence, this, this uh, lethal convergence of Hamas, ISIS, meaning you, you've got Salafi organizations. Hamas has never been considered a Salafi organization, but a Palestinian organization. But in the end, it's really an Iranian, an extension of the Iranian regime organization, which is a zero-sum game, uh, messianically driven. Uh, but there is this convergence between radical Shiite and extremist Sunni organizations here that yeah. Yoni's pointing out that is as dangerous to the stability of the Middle East. The Saudis know it. The Bahrainis know it. The Emiratis know it. The Moroccans know it. This, even the Sudanese know it, the Sudanese government know it, even though they, they, they've they been very difficult. The Somalians know it. I mean, the, 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 the Muslim-majority governments in the Middle East understand that their own stability is under threat to be subverted by these same organizations. This is the message that Israel has to send. It's not about Israel. It's about the Iranian regime's race uh, to destabilize, subvert, and ultimately control the entire Middle East, Africa, and by the way, Latin America, and according to their own uh, religious fervor, the rest of the world. I had a phone call yesterday from, from a senior Palestinian from the PA who retired. He was a high-ranking officer. And I asked him, do you think that the, the Palestinians in Gaza Strip really want Hamas to control them? He said, no. They don't want. Hamas was forced on them. Hamas, in 2007, they made a coup d'etat, expelled the PA from Gaza, and took over by force on the Palestinian people. So I said, why they are not saying anything? He said, when they will be sure that Israel is determined to uh, uh, eradicate Hamas. No, this is Howard's message. Yeah. When, it, when they will be sure that it's going to really happen, you will see a change. But so far, the Israeli uh, moves are not indicating that Israel means business. Really, uh, fulfilling the, the, the goals or the uh, objectives of the operation and to get rid of the military infrastructure of Hamas and kill these leaders who oppressed the Palestinians in Gaza. When, once they will be sure 
when they will see the body of Ikhya Sinwar in Muhammad Def, then they will know that Israel means business. So we have to prove it to the Palestinians because it will help them and will help us also. Yeah, that's right. What, what message, uh, Khaled and uh, Yoni, should we uh, convey to the, to the American to clarify to uh, Israel's dear American friends in Washington? This is the problem, I tell you. President Biden is a very good friend of Israel, and he proved that since the beginning of the war. But you know this uh, fantasy of the two-state solution, that they, they stick to it so much and they want to enforce it on Israel now, now, after such a big massacre happened, and after we saw the anti-Semitism of Hamas and the cruelness of Hamas and the way they butchered the, the Israeli soldiers and civilians, this is something that you cannot persuade Israelis to accept. Uh, no, there's no one in Israel. There are not two people in Israel that are we accepting right. now. That's so, what they don't understand. So we have to, we have to, not to clash with the, the, the Americas, with President Biden and and and, and uh, Secretary of State Blinken. I'm sure that they, they know the truth. They have to understand that, uh, and we have to prove to them that the PA is lying. And how do we do that? We move the, the ball to their court and say, okay, we are willing to have the PA. Now prove to us that you are not supporting terrorism, that you are not uh, corrupt, that you don't take the money, uh, you do not embezzle the money of the Palestinian people. Prove it to us and we'll, okay, we'll welcome you to, go, to come to Gaza and prove to us that you fight terrorism. But look what is happening in Judea and Samaria, in the West Bank. The PA lost its control on the north of West Bank to, the, uh, to Iran and to the terrorist group. Willfully, by the way. Yeah. So if they cannot control the West Bank, Judea and Samaria, how will they control also Gaza Strip? This is something that they, right. you have to ask the Americans. How do you see them control if they cannot uh, control the, the Judea and Samaria? I mean, the message then that Israel and others need to send to the U.S. administration is that there is no partner on the Palestinian side that can deliver right now. There's no partner. Israel is facing two camps among the Palestinians. One of them does not want to make peace with Israel because it does not recognize Israel's right to exist. And the second camp cannot make peace with Israel. And this is basically where we are standing right now. Uh, so what do you do in the meantime? You need to defend yourself. You have the right and the obligation uh, to fight against terrorism, to defend your citizens and hope for the best. And you need to make sure that the Americans understand the reality on the ground, that if you don't fight Hamas and if you don't eradicate Hamas, uh, that will not embolden the, uh, the moderates. You will, if people see Hamas winning, you won't have uh, any moderate uh, people on the Palestinian side emerging. Yeah, that's, that's, that's clear. And also, I, I want to leave our viewers with a, on a positive note. I think there is an argument to be made that the United States and Israel can partner in the day after, which is today. And they can partner by establishing an immediate governing, monitoring body over UNRWA. The UNRWA organization, which is a billion-dollar-a-year organization, has been inciting, has been paying terrorists, has been an employment agency for the Hamas in Gaza. And if the, um, the United States and Israel lead an international coalition establishing a government or governing international body that supervises, that monitors every dollar that goes into UNRWA and make sure that the people of Gaza receive that humanitarian aid, I think Israel will come out looking much better. The United States will come out looking much stronger and, and people will realize where their loyalties on a practical level should lie. I agree, totally agree with you. UNRWA is a terrible organization. I think President Trump, he tried to do something. Change the well, he, he cut off funding. Yeah. But I'm saying we shouldn't cut off funding, but we should monitor funding. Make sure that every single dollar goes where it's going to be and take it out of the hands of Hamas. Khaled, what do you think? The issue of UNRWA can be discussed in all the discussions that will take place after the war is over. When you talk about new administration for Gaza, when you talk about uh, new actors in Gaza, but now it's too early to talk about uh, UNRWA. I agree with you that UNRWA is part of the problem, not part of any solution, because it has not offered the Palestinians any solution other than maintenance. The Palestinians need to move on with their lives, the, and UNRWA has not been able to do that. It's not enough to give Palestinians uh, employment and uh, do all kinds of services, educational uh, and health services, and tell them stay where you are. Uh, so, yeah, but the, the, the political horizon is not the job of UNRWA. The 
Yeah. It's not their job. They need the leadership, local right. leadership that will lead them to a secure solution. Absolutely. That, right. uh, and not to, not to uh, what Hamas did from 2007 until today, they uh, took the Gaza Strip by force. They hijacked it. They hijacked it and hijacked the people of Gaza and turned uh, Gaza Strip to a terror entity. This was supposed to be Singapore, the new Singapore of the Palestinians. That's not for after after the Israeli yeah. withdrawal. I think you know, Yoni, we mean my and you, we know that the Palestinians also made a mistake because a year earlier they voted them in. They voted for Hamas. Yeah. yeah. And and since okay. then we didn't see now any, they are paying for their mistakes, yeah. but yeah. it's about time that they would wake up. Now. They need to revolt against yeah. Hamas. Yeah. Yeah. W- yeah. What Palestinians need is an intifada against Hamas, and we, we didn't see that in the past seventeen years. We no, saw attempts of a yeah. movement called Bidna Naish. We want to leave Bidna Naish, and they oppress them. With, they kill them. Hamas oppress them with force. They just wanted to have a quiet life. Yeah, that's right. And they, they oppress them completely. Well, where we're leaving this is we're talking about uh, the uh, the American uh, Israel Intifada for Freedom <laughs> against yes. radical organizations against uh, UNRWA that uh, we have all unfortunately stood by as Hamas has uh, managed uh, and controlled, hijacked, kidnapped this international organization. I think our view needs to be, in our, uh, with, together with our American allies, that uh, when people in Gaza see that UNRWA has been taken away from the hijackers and returned uh, to the forces of stability, the forces of good, the forces of humanity, and people are beginning to get paid out and fed uh, uh, properly. I think that's going to be an important um, perception message. In addition, while Israel takes the coming months to destroy Hamas capabilities, let them also have a positive track and and, uh, create a kind of practical, positive relationship with the people of Gaza. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. We end up, last last, uh, word. The international community made a big mistake after 2007, after Hamas took over Gaza, that the international community did not engage Palestinians who were willing to stand up against Hamas. Uh, all these years, the international community totally neglected uh, the people in Gaza, and that's why Hamas was able to stay in power and strengthen its presence in Gaza. So now I say, maybe the international community will step in, and if you really want to help the Palestinians, Help Israel, stand with Israel to remove Hamas from power. Well, I'm hoping the, our, our American friends and our Israeli friends will watch this program and uh, glean a few ideas from what we've been talking about. I want to thank Khaled Abu Tuame, a, a great Middle East analyst, dear friend, and co-host of Al Shak Al Asad Lana, and also to you, uh, Yanni Ben Menafem, JCPA senior uh, analyst, a great friend and colleague for so many decades, uh, a former uh, a director really- general. I'm very glad that you're going to promote this Arabic uh, absolutely media, Arabic media. media from the JCPA. Yeah. Absolutely, very right. Good so we uh, hope that you will get the financial aid. To we are well, that's right. Well, people watching this program can turn to jcpa.org and and join us. We're making great inroads into finding having supporters. But this is a, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, even the the top level of leadership in Israel knows about this and are uh, are, are are very uh, uh, in a, in a very positive way. Glad at the creativity. Um, that people like you really understand the culture of the region. That's where we are now, cultural sensitivity and intelligence about Israel living in uh, holidays we've talked about. We are a 37-year-old, 3,700-year-old minority member, the Jews, of an Arab Muslim majority Middle East. And we want to make sure that everyone accepts us in the family, but we have to communicate in Arabic, Arabic culture, Arabic language, and the results will be very positive, surprising. no one better than Yoni in understanding Palestinian culture, by the way. As a veteran uh, Palestinian affairs reporter, I can tell you from uh, first hand. Very good. Years. Thank you. There we go. So thank you both, guys. Uh, this has been a great show, and um, uh, I hope uh, our audience finds it uh, helpful, and uh, decision makers in every country find it helpful in the West and in the Arab uh, Muslim Middle East, uh, majority Muslim Middle East so, as well. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Uh, and join us again next week for Our Middle East, Al-Shakar Al-Satlana. Thank you.